So hopefully after tonight, if someone asks you, do you like African cichlids, you will probably say, like East African or West African? As you should, you know, because they're not all the same. They're kept, they're kept very, very different. Um, but if you like a pistogramma and you like soft water fish, most West Africans are like that. They like soft water, some only breed at pH four. Okay, there's some pelvic acrimis that I'm gonna show you that I can't get to breed because I because I don't bother to put in um, bags of peat there when you get that water so soft. Uh, at the same time, you have some West Africans some West Africans that live in the Congo River um, rapid system that have, that have harder water that can be kept like East Africans, which are your lymphrologists. So, so, so we're going to get into, but the whole point of this talk I based it around was, well, what I want to know what these lists, when you order from Wet Spot, or you order from Tangled and Cichlids, or you order from Tristan's Tropical Fish or one of my favorites, Aquatic Clarity, can you see these names? And instead of you having to go to a mad internet search, or what I do is I just take out my book on West African cichlids, like normal people do, um, is that you look, is I wanted to give you a name so you understand what these things are. So when you look at it, it's like, oh, I heard about that. I think I might want something like that. So this is to give you a general buyer's guide to what's available in the United States. And, and you go on the and you go on Facebook, the West African cichlid group is one group that you should join. There are two of them. The one out of Europe is a little bit better, but they're both good. And you both join them on Facebook. That's how I found out. I find out a lot of stuff. And then you and um, and it's a really close knit community. They all the West the European group also does collecting trips every year. For about three grand, you can go to Cameroon or you can go to Congo, whatever. Eventually, I will get there. I want to do that. But those are, but those are good groups to do. So I'm going to get into some of that as well. But let's first just do some basic, if I can get the hang of this thing. Okay. Oh, that's, all right. Ah, there we go. So your habitat, your water parameters are between 4, 4.5 and 7.2 pH, generally what it is, and it's soft. If you love cichlids and love planted tanks, um, you should be keeping West Africans because like epistles, they love plants. Even your bigger West Africans, on the whole, I read very, uh, there are a couple exceptions, of course, but most of them are, are plant, very, very plant friendly. So it's great. So when I was over at Gary's place looking at his um, rainbows, I was like, man, he's got all these great dither fish and no, and no, and no real fish in the tanks. He doesn't have any <laughs> West African things, which is a lot of nice dithers. Because you could be keeping West Africans in each one of those tanks and they wouldn't bother your rainbows. Um, so that, so generally that's a, it's a great thing. They, but, so general habitat. This is in uh, the Kalenti River in, in Ghana, which had, which has a lot of really uh, pretty fish. In. So this is this is my big thing. I'm going to go through this point by point. Like they they prefer lots of vegetable matter. They're not a lot of meat eaters. They 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 sift through. They're like a pistos. They act like a pistos. They they're sifting through stuff all the time. That's why you need finer gravel for them, like sand or very your finest uh, pea 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 like gravel. They love that. That's what they do. They do it all day. Um, they're constantly looking. Um, and so with some protein, and now I feed Daphne and Brian shrimp and, and mosquito larvae fine. You know, you, I mean, you can feed them on your hatch Brian shrimp like like um, like Stephen's got, and that'd be great. Uh, but nothing meatier than it. I, I mean, blood worms, no. I wouldn't do that. I, you're, you, so you want to do a lot of it spurling of flakes. Even if it's marine flakes, people are like, well, you can't marine. You can't feed marine food to fish. Fish can't read. They can tell you whatever you give them. All right. In most cases. So if when the frozen food I liked, which we used to be able to get where I was, is called uh, um, Ocean Trition. Uh, uh, Ocean Trition. They had their Formula One and the Formula Two. The Formula Two is more green. It's a frozen cube. It's great. I don't know if you guys can get that around here. I got the flake, but if you get the frozen man, it's for, it's from a reef fish, but. Your Wessies will, will love it. They eat like crazy. So it's a great frozen treat cube. Just freeze a couple of those cubes up. Uh, it's got a little shrimp and lots of veggies in it. Do you right. like feeding live foods? Uh, I, yeah, you could definitely do live foods. I, I wouldn't do blood worms. I would do like brine shrimps and daffy and stuff like that. Well, we used to get mosquito larvae live Mosquito larvae, oh, the, oh yeah. I mean, they will, I mean, I have seen cardinal tetras turn into voracious great white sharks around mosquito larvae. Mosquito larvae is great. Oh, feed them that. But I wouldn't do lots of heavy blood worms and stuff like that. 
But yeah, muscular is great, but, but it's more like a treat, but not, as, not like every day. But once a week I do frozen food when I, when I remember to do it. Um, water changes are key. I have an, they really thrive if you can do weekly 25% or bi-weekly 50%. Because I, if they don't, you will see your, my cribs will get Popeye, they'll get dropsy, West African fish will get dropsy in it, in it, in it. It's like really easy if you don't keep up with your water changes. So if you don't keep up, they'll get dropsy, they can get Popeye, all that stuff, but they really, really need water changes. And I got tired of losing fish because I was lazy about doing water changes. I started doing water changes. Oh, bang, all that was gone. Um, I still have some hole in the head. I still have hexamedia issues on some of my fish. But that's in one tank, so I think there's maybe a lot of junk at the bottom of it. But water chains, and also a Nutrizor pads and your filters are always great. Um, since they spend a lot, again, I already talked about the fine gravel or sand. Since uh, I go down the creek right near my hat, right near my condo, and I get sand from the creek, and it's great. It's uh, it, I'm, it, it, I'm just lucky now. If you get if you got it, like local creeks, it, it looks great, and it's usually fine sand, and, and, and it works. Uh, they have very high oxygen flow in their waters. You know, the rivers are flat, it's slow moving, but it's high oxygen. So I put air stones in there. They really benefit because I noticed that when I would get these, uh, pu these puff of chromis and I put them in my tank and they all of a sudden be gasping. And I'm like, oh, I put air stones in there and they stop gasping. So they really will gasp. Their lungs, can, their gills can get very tender. So it's why you have to get the water changes right. Get their water because they they like very clean, highly oxygenated water. So a lot of plants are fine, but on the whole, try to do an airstone if you can, or a good overflow filter. A good overflow filter where that water is coming over, over the surface and picking up oxygen is fine. But an in tank like a canister filter that is not producing lots of surface rippling, they're getting oxygen there. That's they really they really need that. So at least give them something with air bubbles or with a good overflow for putting oxygen in the tank. Um, temperatures, they're, they're not warm fish, like you're, you, some of these fish really like, you know, 72. Uh, some of these par uh, Paranaka Kermis, which I'm going to show you a few of, they can do fine at the lake without any heat at all. So they, not, 77 is about as high as I go for these. Um, they need, uh, they definitely need some dither fish, like rainbow fish, or I also use live bears. I breed Alvarezi swords, Alvarezi swords for me breed like rabbits, and they breed in acidic water, and swords are my favorite library because I can keep them with acidic, and they'll still breed, and they, unlike Varianus pites, which start to drop off. But uh, libraries are great. Diamonds, uh, what are, another one of my favorites are white clouds. I love white clouds, they're good schooling fish. Any of your Daniels are great schooling fish. But active little tetras, I mean, I, I use rummy nose too. Rummy nose and cardinals work fine. The Africans aren't gonna, I mean, I mean these guys aren't gonna hurt them. I mean, rummy nose are great. They look great with, with them. So, uh, so your any any even your larger serpentids. I'm a huge fan of your four inch and five inch plus resboros species, like your portholes and your clowns. I love them. They look beautiful in a 90 gallon tank. So, I'm also a large serpentid nut. Like any your large resboros, but those are fine. Resboros are great, and and they're not super quick moving. So, but they need that, otherwise they won't come out and see you. I, I, all my fish are good as tanks are, I have nine and they all densely planted because I, since I don't have a fish room, they have to look reasonably nice when their friends come over. So they can't just be like, um, uh, a, 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 like a sponge filter and, and some plants over in the corner. They actually have to be somewhat aquascaped. <laughs> but they like that. Okay. This is my 90, this is general, this is what I'm talking about. <coughs> Uh, oh, I got this pointer. Okay, so these are uh, a Pelmotacrumus. Those are how big they are there. Actually, I've got to get that male on because he's dominating the other two. These are purple resboras. These are, again, uh, tuxedo uh, sword tails. Those are Paranacacrumus down there. These are this, you know, and I've got, um, and those are, uh, those are Odessa barbs, those are uh, splash tetras with climbing resboras up top. Lots of plants, I'm always pulling moss out, but that's generally what they like. That works for them. Those are ocelot swords. 
fact, the plants I got from Gary, that's where they're going to go. They're going to go in that tank. So this is a general 90 gallon tank, but it, it, it's it, you generally you can do a community tank with that. Um, there's tons of hiding plates. There's about $300 worth of, of marl pony wood in that thing. It's funneled by a Fluval 406 underneath. The, all my tank stands are made out of cinder blocks, and I just paint them with my paint that I that I paint the walls of my condo with. So, but uh, it's very easy. I have it right next to TV, and again, not that warm of of a temperature. And yeah, so that's basically what works. So. Uh, that's a good new tank. We're going to start off with Pelvicromus, this is the one that most people think of when they think of an East, a West African cichlid. These are wild caught ones that I had. I ended up giving them away because they bred so much. They breed like Dracana jewels. I mean, these are the <laughs> convicts of the of the West African world. They, I love them and they're stunning. But after a while, my people in my club got tired of them. You know. Um, but but the but these the wild caught guys are great because the males have a ton of color. These got up to four inches and they were semi aggressive. All the books say that, that your pelvic curves pulker can be, they're peaceful. No, not really, they can be kind of dicks. But I mean, I love them, sorry about the language of it, but they can be that way, but they're cool, but have big dither fish around them so they'll be fine. But these guys, the wild, these are wild ones I got from the wet spot, and they can get to be about four inches, so they get large. They're not a real small pelvic curves. Um, they're, they're great, they're pretty, they breed well, and they're always attractive, but yeah, they just breed a lot. Um, now, well, whenever I talk about Pelpocrimus, everyone seems to think, well, it's, it's a crib, it's a crebentus, they're all cribs. I'm like, when I say crebentus, I'm like, they're like, oh, you mean this one? I've got those. I'm like, no, you have Pelpocrimus pulker. The major confusing thing with this whole genus, which drives me nuts, but I can see how it happened, is that probably there is a real Pelpocrimus crebentus, and it's not these. Right, we're going to get to that, but we're, but they, but my theory is when they found they sped, they found Pelvicrumus crebentus first, right, and they named it Teniatus, but there, but it was a name. They and then when they went, then on, on other folk, and they probably took some sketches because this is in 1900 when they went up to Nigeria and saw these. Oh, these are the same fish in Cameroon. These must be pelvic, these must be those Crebenza cichlids, or that way, I'm assuming that's how it happened. And the whole genus got named Crebenza. And it's led to mass confusion ever since. But there's there's eight species in this genus. I love them all. But, um, but so that's what you mean. So when people say, I got Cribs, like, well, what species? Well, it's pelvic Cribs, Crebenza. No, you just assume they're talking about Pulker. Assume they're talking about Pulker. Because when you show them, I was like, oh, that's not my fish. So a lot of folks I know in Charlotte, like, they'll get, they'll get, they'll get a Crebenzis because they kind of look similar. And they'll get a male and they'll get a female of, of like, Pulker. And like, why aren't they getting along? Like, you actually have two different species. And they're, and they're going to hate each other, you know. So there's, there, this can get a little confusing, but hopefully by the end you will, under, you will understand what this all means. So I love this species, but yeah, I just I gave mine away because I because they just bred so much. And you put after a while, if you, if you look at all the stuff in that tank, I got tired of having to take it all apart and then put it back in to get a bunch of pulper frats. So keep pulper, but put it where you can get them out easily. Don't put them in a ninety with lots of wood and everything like I do. All right. So keep them easy. All right. This is Pelvicrumus teniatus. This is the other big Pelvicrumus in in Nigeria. Um, you often see these, uh, this is the Nigeria Greens. I have, you can get Nigeria Greens, they're Czech bred and Jeff Michaels has them up at, up, up at Aquatic Clarity. They're about 40 bucks, about 50 bucks a pair. I love them. They're beautiful. For some reason, I can't get mine to breed right well. Hopefully, uh, that'll, ha that'll change soon. But uh, this is, this was, the ones on the left were from stock originally from uh, Rehoboth Aquatics that he got that toy and got in and those are bred and then those are a later importation I got from a local fish store. Beautiful things. They're, they're just, they're, again, if they're not quite as bright, but the, but the green variety is great. They also come in a yellow form, which some people don't like. I want them just because I never get to see them, but they, are they rare? No, they're, they're probably pretty common over in Nigeria, just they're not that important because Nigeria is not that stable a country, which is another reason why you don't see a lot of West Africa. And the next one, they, these are the reds. And raise your hand if you've seen these before. You 
these are the more, yeah, besides Pulker, you see the reds, and they're great. Uh, the wonderful fish, this, uh, unfortunately, I lost that mail, but someone gave me another one. I like, um, but I bred these, they're, they're lovely fish. I had that female at home. Now, just swimming around, hopefully they'll get some babies with their other male. So, you know, great, great fish. Very bright uh, color, but again, if you look, the females look the same with this species. So, it, so you do not mix up the 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 varieties because it's impossible to tell because the female Nigeria greens, Nigeria yellows, and reds all look the same. So they all look the same. So all the females have a very similar look. So unless you really know what you're looking at, don't 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 put them all in the same tank because you'll never sort them out. Are they mouth brooders? No, they're not mouth brooders. Although I have a good book of, I have seen them pick up their babies and move them to other spots in the tank, but they don't really brood. The the uh, the chromatidolapias do that. We'll get to them. Those are more mouth breeds. All right. So that's that. So that's the big, other big species in in Nigeria. Now, now we get to the real pelvic curvus curvendus. Okay. These are now in camp. This is a fabulous species. It's, it's this is my favorite species of cichlid, hands down. Period. Um, every river in Cameroon seems to have a slightly different version, which makes them incredibly collectible. If you are into that, it's like Epistogramma agazizi. You can probably have eight different tanks full of different Epistogramma agazizi. So you can. You won't get bored of them because you love them, right? Now those look like, a lot like the Rolofi to me. Yeah, well, we're going to get to Rolofi. I love Rolofi. Rolofi are, are not as pretty, but, but, but they're just cute. And so we'll get to Rolofi because I, I love those two. Um, these are, these, this is, so you, basically you've got two, you've got three different fin color form, color types of this species. You have the Maliwe form, which has lots of spotting and a gold collar like that. Then you have the Makuri, which has a few big spots on its collar fin like that. And then some females have spotting, some do not. But what you get in with these is you get this beautiful lilac chest. They look like a wrasse. I mean, if there's some way for a freshwater fish like a wrasse, these get close to it. Uh, sometimes in the wild, they have red cheeks. Like that one has red cheeks, some do not. I love the ones with the red cheeks. Why not? It's a little more special. But some do. A lot of them don't. But a lot of varieties don't. But some do, and I always search those ones out because it makes it a little bit more special. Not all Maliways have red cheeks. Not all populations. I mean, you, you get very even with the Malay River. So this is a great one to start out with because you can breed them at a, at a pH of about seven. It doesn't have to be very soft. You can always sell them, and they don't try to kill everything in the tank when you try to when they try to breed. This is probably hands down this is a great introductory one. That the Malingue variety you can get them. You can this is the, probably one of the most common varieties, and there's a reason for it because it's easy to keep, and it doesn't over. And it you know no one ever gets tired of buying these. They're 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 just cool. Uh, I love the Macoris as well. And now there's a Lacunja, there's Kaike. These are all French names, so I'm probably botching the French, but all these are French, because Cameroon is all in French language, so uh, Lacundra, uh, Kanke, uh, by Pindi, Bandawari, oh, that's my quiz moment, I knew I had to study for this one. And then you got uh, the, 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 the uh, by Pindi, you've got Adina, which I'm gonna show you next, uh, and you've got the Donga as well. So you have all these different varieties of this. So they're all a little different. So, but you've got two different finish. You've got this finish right here. It really shows in the male with two big spots or spotting. And the other one would be the Niti or the Lobe variety. And the Niti or the Lobe variety, there are no spots on the caudal. It's just blue and white. It's just the green. It's just the blue and red macaulay. It's just the blue and white speckling on it. They've all got the red fins. They're stunning. This is where both sexes are just as pretty. All right. So. This is, I, 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 I cannot be without one location of this in one of my tanks at all times. I just love them. That it, was hot, it was hard because during COVID, nothing was coming out of Cameroon. So for three years, we were devoid of new stocks of wild importations from, from, from Cameroon. But Cameroon is back in business, so you can get them again. All right, so again, female, but the, but the, the low bay form is much more gold color uh, on, the, on, the male, on, on the females. All right, next one. So this is the this is the one of the newest varieties that's come out. It looks a lot like Malewe. I love it. I do not have those anymore because hold on, because she 
she killed him because they had a spat. So I always have it. Now, sometimes that'll happen. So I have a spare tank to put him in. I, and the, he wasn't damaged at all. Just stressed, stressed him out. He was dying because she just went after him because there, there, there was two spawns of fry in the 20 gallon tank and I didn't remove him. Um, she in turn got zapped out by, by a pentachromas and a bigger dorsalis in my school fish tank. So I was like, oh, well, but I've got, I've got two spawns of fish in that tank, but beautiful. That, that one looks like the common crib to me. Yeah, but, but, uh, I, I, I think they're 10 times better looking, but, um, the, again, well, he, well, they all sort of look somewhat similar. The common crib your thing is very back in the beginning. That is your common crib. That to me is, but that's the prettiest form of the common crib I've ever kept. It was hurt me to give them up because I'm like, but I'm just tired of doing it. But I, like, that's the best, that's the best damn poker I've ever, strain of poker I've ever had. But so if you get, if you go look at wet spot, get the wild caught of the poker if you can, you'll get those. So you see, but they all have a similar look, but these have a little bit more gland to them, in my, in my opinion, on these. So that's why I like them. Now these, now these uh, dinner locations similar to the Maliwe, because if you look at it, they look almost exactly like, like that. All right. So, um, but all the, all the locations are great. Some are harder to read than others. But the Maliwe and the Adeno, I read this in Charlotte Tapwater, which is like pH is six, six, seven, and, or pH seven and soft. So these are great, so these are relatively easy to keep. The ones farther south, like the like the like the Makuri and the Vipindi and the Lobe are can be a little bit more like softer water. Alright, and then this is the most recent one that I put a video on your discussion. I was gonna take some more current pictures of these last night and I saw them reading. These were very rare because nothing's been caught out in the Donga River for years ever. Because I talked to Jeff Michaels up on Aquatic Clarity and he's like, this this is the first time. So my local fish store, I got them to start ordering from a with aquatics. And Rehoboth Aquatics is the main importer of Westies. So, uh, Toyan offered in my local fish store, he's like, I bought them, and I was like, man. So I just I just grabbed those right out of the bag. I'm like, yeah, I'll take those. So they were 70 bucks. So these guys are probably the most expensive of the species I've paid for. Um, now, my male has definitely has red cheeks now, very, very nice red cheeks, but they're, they're, but they, these, these guys get a little testy because they, 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 they try to take over the whole 90 gallon tank and I tried to put in some other uh, Westies in there. I had to remove them because they were being some jerks. So now they're in the 20 gallon this fine. So they can get territorial. So, so you can't keep really, if you're going to keep two species of, of, of Westies, put them at the same time just like you do other, just like your, your staff from your, or your South American because they, they can get testy and they are cichlids. Um, all right, we spent a lot of time on that. We're going to move on. Any questions so far? Because these things look great right now. I mean, the, the color on that like, coral film right now is really bright. The colors are intense. These are just after I got the, uh, I got these about a month ago. Actually, about a month and a half. All right, now we're in the next piece, which is what I, uh, is what um, Stephen just got some of these. These are. On the left, there are two. There are two locations that are on the market right now. Some ocelots is lovely, not as screamingly beautiful as as uh, Crebenzis, but they're very easy to keep. They're more heavier bodied. They're more heavier bodied cichlid. The, the one on the right is is variety um, Matadi. Uh, when they breed, the females get very dark black. They really do. That that whole. This side gets black, the center part gets whitish silver, and that gets red. So the jet black fish, you can see that female across across here. They're stunning. Again, very peaceful. I keep these with like Berlin's, you know, strained sword tails, and they're fine. You know, they live in a bunch of job for a nice plant tank, and they're and they're then they're great. Again, very easy to keep species, uh, and 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 they'll breed for you too. I've had I the other one is is the Moanda variety. The Moanda has a little bit different shape, caudal fin, and the and the shading on here is a little bit different. But again, that male is in full happy colors. He's like that all the time. He never he never goes. He's never not gold. So subos is very very goldy. The, the, sub the small the sub ocelots means small eye spots on the back. This one maybe look a little different than your regular common crib. But, uh, but the females are, this is again, equally, if you've got a 20 gallon tank, have a pair. Uh, I keep mine with Romeo's Tetris and they're fine. In fact, the Dodongas, 
Then the dog is the previous one. They live with Romino, so they, they all live together with some sub and they bred with them. So um, easy fish to keep, lovely. Well, these females are some of the best females of all the pets. Oh, they're, they're absolutely stunning. And if you look on your phone, look up female sub and it's black. They turn black with silvery white around that red belly and that yellow, oh my God, yeah. Um, and so they really totally change your spine. It, it, it is the dead. All right, this is, um, this is another pelvic curve with Sylvia. This is from Nigeria. This is recently renamed by Anton Lavos. This used to be named as Pelvicurmus af subasalatus because they look like them. Um, these are very easy to get. I haven't had a great luck with them. I've bred them once or twice. I haven't had a great luck with them. They're, they are pretty. They're, they're, they're probably the heaviest body of the whole genus. So they get about, you know, they get about three inches. They're very chunky. They look like little, they look like little lot of car curvaces. They really do. Except when they breed, then the females turn bright gold. So cribs like to turn golds. The whole genus likes to turn bright yellows and golds when they get breeding in their, in their iridescent golds. So she gets bright gold, not quite as intense as the other ones, but they're very nice fish. They get out of spawn that look like a, I mean, I took the, I, a lot of these pictures I've, I've taken myself, a few I took off the internet, but these, I, that's what, in fact, Mike, I think those are your fish because my friend Bob Wolf got them from you years ago, and he said he got them from you. So I don't know if you know. I don't know if you. I don't know if you know who Bob Wolf is, but he's in my club. He said those originally came from you. So about six or seven years ago, you had those. So you never know. You never know where your fish are going to go. That picture on the left was on the internet. The right one I took. I have them at home. All right, these are uh, Pelvicurvus drachenfelsi. They used to be Pelvicurvus teniatus wari. These guys are, this picture does not do them, I used it because it's my own picture and I try to use my own pictures when I can. That female turns insane colors of pinks, reds, oranges, and her whole caudal fin is hard to describe. Again, another knockout, the females, the, the males are pretty, but it, there, it's the female. These guys I've never been able to breed because they like a pH about four. A, a really soft water, like you can get like, put that peak sock in there, really, really soft water, leaves on the bottom of the tank, and they're absolutely stunning if you can get them to breed. Um, they're easy to get. I mean, you can get it from Wet Spots got them, and I know I know my, Jeff Michaels up at Aquatic Clarity's got them. So get, get them. They're absolutely amazing. The, 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 the female really, it, it, again, she turns that radio color, that little bit on her, but um, if you can't search on a Drakken Fels, you look on her that pelvic curvis wari, because they're on the Wari River and they only exist in that river in, in Cameroon, and then you'll find them. <laughs> but yeah, you can get these. Just be ready. If, but if you can breed killie fish like that in the dark peat water, you'll be fine with these. In fact, you could probably keep a lot of the West African killies and these cribs together just, just fine. Because the cribs aren't, aren't really predators. So again, you, I mean, you know, so they're not going to eat your little fish. So, um, beautiful one, I love, again, I love them. They're, the male is a subtle colors, but he, he does have that more of, of the, of the, te, of the teniatus caudal fin look a little bit. Uh, but again, these used to be, Pelvicurmus teniatus was, was, was broken up by Anton Lamboge into Pelvicurmus curvensis, Pelvicurmus drachenfelsi, and Pelvicurmus teniatus. So they all used to be the, all under the same guys. Um, I, and uh, I've, Chatted with uh, Anton over Facebook. Also, he's also an orchid nut like I am, so we've got stuff in common. Um, but yeah, really, really cool fish. Really, I mean, these all are lovely. I mean, this is why I wish I could have a fish room because I'd, I'd have a couple tanks with every single species in it. Um, the, this is Saccharomonas. These are these are these were found in these are found in the same habitat as Pulker. Sometimes they're wild caught and imported with Pulker as quote parasites, not supposedly the same thing. These get a little bit bigger. They get about four to five. Then they have the giant curve. They have about three different color varieties. They are, they, this one looks like the green variety, because you can see the, actually the red. The females look again, look the same. That's the red, there's, there's yellow, and there's a green variety. Um, I had them in there very gentle and peaceful when they bred for me. Another friend had them in with East Africans, and they were killing off the Malawis in the tank. So, it depends, you know, but I've had good luck with them. I find them very nice and friendly. Uh, giant crib, they're usually about $12. They're not a super expensive fish, but better get them out and breed them because who knows what's gonna happen. You know, they could become rare, so. Uh, easy fish, 
really pleasant. I think I like the pumper, but these are a little bit different. Uh, Papa Krumus Sacramontis, they were also made a separate, they used to be Papa Krumus after uh, Pulker, but now, uh, but Anton Limbaugh put them in Sacramontis. Okay. Now this is Rolafi, um, not the greatest picture, but it's mine, so I'm like, oh, I can't try to use mine. I breed these. These are not super pretty. They're not flashy, but if there's a term cute, they're definitely cute. They have a cuteness to them. They are the most docile cichlids you could ever keep. I mean, you can keep these with neons and they'll breed. They won't breed the neons. They're probably the smallest in the public. They're one of the smallest, yeah. They're one of the smallest. Um, really, they have a lot of subtle colors. The females got some blue on her. Again, probably the least flashy of all of them, but still, just they're just fun. I mean, but then again, I mean, heck, you pistogram people. We've got some pretty dull looking epistos out there, you know? So this is nothing, all right? It really is nothing. You guys should be used to this by now. You know, used to dull brown job fish. And like, we saw the wastes are, but this is one of those, but they're still wonderful. We still love them. <laughs> so get them. Um, they're easy to keep. I, again, they all love planted tanks, and you can keep with lots of all your other fish you like. Bumpa Kermis Rolafi, they're, they're, they're just pretty, again, much more subtle colors. Then again, I like brown fish because we're going to get into Paranaka Kermis, and those, those are all brown, and I, I adore them. So. Um, yeah, so moving on, Bender Kermis. I have, the, my own experience with these, I got some of these recently and my, uh, I got it and the female, the male had killed the female practically in the shipping bag, she died a couple days later, and then the males proceeded to, to terrorize everybody in my school tank and eat my Mexican dwarf crayfish. So <laughs> while they are cool, these are not really community fish. They're mouth brooders. My own experience, I put them here because you're going to see them on the list. They're gorgeous. The whole genus is cool. That's why I just, I, I mean, these are all from internet. They are a neat genus. They're, the, uh, you also have uh, Batesii. Batesii is much more barred, striped on there. Batesii is a cool looking one, but these are definitely semi-aggressive. And these, but they like plants. They don't rip out plants at all in time. Not all, they don't touch a plant, but, but, but they'll kill other fish, you know. And but, you didn't uh, talk but, about any of the humulus at all. What? Humulus. Humulus. Oh, oh, like hum is that something? We're getting to those. That's a whole different genus because Anton separated that out too. I love, I've love. i got my own pictures of Humulus today. We're, oh, we're getting there. So the Bendy Krumus, I just want to show you what these are. Have a, these do not need a lot of plants. Rocks, you know, rock, wooded rocks and bigger plants. Um, cool fish. I just am not going to keep them anymore but until I have a, another tank. But they're gorgeous. They're worth your time. If you've got a 20... Or if you've got a you know 40 breeder with some hefty sized rice spores, then you know let them go. But they'll terrorize it. I mean, I mean they're the ones that killed that the female identical when I put her in my school tank. I have a 65 gallon school tank. So, but they're cool. I I still love them. But I, they just don't fit with what I have. Now, sea tilapia. If you could find this, I got this. I think he's in Nebraska. Uh, Janos was his name, um, and he breeds these. When they're little, they're white with, they're, they're black with yellow barrings. They're stunning. And they, it says they're plant friendly, but they're really not. because This is the one that'll dig pits, they move sand around. But my goodness, they're gorgeous. I think I had a female pair that act like a male pair, or my male was impotent because they laid eggs, but they didn't hatch. And they would fight them off. So, but they love to move stuff around. They're really pretty fish. Again, it's that black, they look like it's a black and white barn when they're younger. This is in spawning colors. They're a beautiful fish. If you can find them, snatch them up. About 30 years ago, I got some of those from Dolores Shear. Yeah. Who? Dolores Shear. Oh, yeah. This is, this, is, this is another one of those I, I would set up a tank if I had a chance to get them again. They're, they're, they're amazing. Uh, very, very hard to find. Very hard to find. Probably a lot of our stocks probably are red. Okay, Nana Crew is a great genius. Um, there's so many of them out there. They're great for little 10 gallon tanks. They're really good for little planet tanks and stuff like that. They live in rivers, so they're, they don't, they're, they're gonna be definitely bottom layers. Perilous, I can get a lot. Um, you can see those. It can also sometimes have a little spots on them right there, but Perilous, is, they're very variable. But uh, Perilous is great. They only get maybe about two inches, maybe two and a half. And they're really cute. They love plants, but they but they love rapids. If you want to create a rapid-like habitat, they're, they're fine. Um, Splendids, I love this species. It's probably my favorite one of them all. 
I had two of these in my 40 long, but when the electric power went out, my neighbor didn't click the uh, electromagnetic on the, on the filter right to go again, so they, so they died, but they're a great fish. You get these to wet spots, they're becoming more and more easy to get. Super nice, super nice. Uh, you get a group of them. I mean, you, you can put two pairs in a, in a 40 long, but not a 40 breeder, because they, they do get very territorial. But the whole fish, I mean, the fish, they, they have a violet, they, they have a grayish, bluish gray sheen on the rest of them. They're, they're easy, really nice. Uh, these you see a lot too. These I've never had good luck with because I probably haven't had the water high enough. They like about 80 degree water and they like it really soft. And they live in a, a lake in, uh, I forget where it is, probably Congo. Uh, but I love the you, Democratic Republic. I'm glad, I'm glad I put that stuff on there. Um, so you see these a lot, they're worth grabbing. They're not the easiest to breed because they like warm temperature. Like, you know, discus, if you, you could probably keep your discus just fine. Um, but yeah, they're called transvestitis because in that time when they were naming them, the females usually weren't prettier than the males. So they named them transvestitis to show that the females were actually prettier than the males. That's what they named them. Yeah, they like really soft water. Times. They like soft water times. 80 degree hot. I mean, you have to at least 78. From my experience, but I've never bred them. I've kept them for a little bit. Oh, they're pretty, and then I lose them in about three weeks because I didn't, I didn't do my homework and do it at the time. But I include it because you see the lot on this because they're they're stunning. Yeah. All right, we're getting into this is a lone member. This is usually sold as uh, bluefin rilaffi. Uh, I I had this my pair. I never get them to breed, but they were cool. Um, I I just after a while I had the pair for about a year and then the male got sick because it wasn't doing water changes enough. But uh, they're a really pretty pair. They're again they're a little bit more subtle. They're, they are in, in enigmatic chromis because they're not quite pelvic chromis. Is and that, was that the Luca, um, Yeah, that's the, the, yeah. This, the humulus. Yeah, the Lucantii, that's named after Lucanus. Uh, out of, I think out of Canada, right? Uh, I wait, uh, no, it's not him, but that, that, that's a different one. Um, you see these on lists all the time. They're worth getting. They're, they're really pretty. The male's not as pretty as the female. If you like maroon, reddish maroon fish. Lovely fish. They get pretty good size too. No, they only get about maybe three inches max. Really? They're they're definitely a dwarf. Hmm. They're the same size as your crib. But if you see them, grab them. They're they're really pretty, and they get they weren't really mean to each other. I've heard that they were mean to fish. I never saw that at all. Keep them with it. You, you, you get them to show a little rainbow fish or some white clouds. White clouds are one of my favorite little bit of fish in the world. Um, all right. The, this, the chromatidolapia, there are lots of these out there. These can be semi-aggressive. They get about four inches, four to five inches. These are mouth brooders. And you can see they had some fry in there when I brought them. I got these from, from Ted Judy back when we were swapping fish. They, um, this is not, does not do them justice. They're, they're really, really pretty. They're not like as flashy pretty, but they're, it's a really cool genus of mouth brooders. The Kingsley eyes are really cool. I got, I got, I had those. Those get about seven inches, so these can get big. These are definitely mid-sized cichlids, and they can be a little semi-aggressive. The females really rough on the male and almost kill them. Um, but uh, really neat genus. They are all over Nigeria, Togo. They're they're very widespread media. I mean, Chromatilla by Gunther Gunther has been the hobby for years. You can find it on a lot of sites. Still worth worth picking up, but not for a small tank. I would say at least a 40 breeder for these and be ready to have a tank to put the put the male in if one of them starts getting pissy. All right. But they're but mouth breeders, you want a mouth breeder, these, these are your mouth breeders. Just tell me when to stop, I'm because I, I don't want to take care of Now, I've had more drama with this species. I have spent hundreds of dollars on them because they are probably the most expensive Westie out there when they're imported. Um, I have gotten these. And, then, and then I got them in my 90 gallon tank and I slowly acclimated them. And of course, they died because they now, like I learned now, when you get fish in bags, of course, I just literally acclimate the temperature, then pour, the, pour all the stuff into a net, then put them right in the tank. You don't acclimate fish you've got to sit in the miller. Because if you do it, if you do it, because I did it over an hour, all that acidic water is going to turn right into nitrate or, or, or toxic ammonia and kill them. So I lost the first batch like that. That was two hundred dollars down the drain because they're hundred dollars a pair. Or now it's probably three because they're hundred feet. I got them to jump Michael's, and I got another pair 
and I end up losing one of them. These are absolutely spectacular. They're also really rare. And if you, if there, I know there's captive raised ones out there because Jeff's got them in, Wet Spot's got them in. So I know there are captive ones out there. If you know people who raise captive, grab these. They're not super aggressive to other fish, but dear God, they are mid range. They get about five inches, and the colors are stunning. They're probably, in my opinion, the holy, one well, of the holy grails of West Africans. I just have not good luck with them and they need a break, but I love and hate them at the same time. I hate them because I've never been able to keep them really well. But in the 90, they were fine. I was going to put them in the 90 if I could, but they, they did well, but I don't think I got a real pair, though. Jeff swore he sent me a pair. Um, I don't think he did. But they're worth your time if you see them. They're not going to be cheap. You're looking at about $150 a pair, you know, maybe $200. But that's for wild caught. If you can get captive, grab them. Grab them in a second. Do not hesitate. Do not click. Do not say no. All right. If you've got a 40 breeder, you know, you know, put some in there, raise them up. They, you know, they're, but they're, they're amazing. They're amazing. They're really rare because they're only in a couple streams in Sierra Leone. Or Ghana, sorry, Ghana. You gotta put it out there. All right, remember Kermis Roberts here. It's only one species of the genus. Probably one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. All right, uh, I just got these. I got these about a, three, about a month ago. Um, Charlotte Aquarius site, there's a wet spot order and wet spot's able to get Pelmachia Kermis that no one else can for some reason. These are mid range. These are about seven, they can get about seven inches. They are again. My Google Pixel phone took those pictures really well. Uh, the one you see, I've got a very dominant male, and he's keeping all the other ones subdued. So he's kind of being a jerk, but I have to get him out of there. But really pretty fish, and they haven't ripped up any plants, but they're big. You know who says South America has all the big, all the kind of attractive mid-sized cichlids? No. West Africa has plenty, it's just you just usually can't find them. The other species that you're going to see, okay, the other species you're going to see is uh, uh, Palmatacrumus nigrofasciatus, which is stunning and they're really pretty. They're, they're a little bit, I think, a little bit more brightly colored and they're getting a little smaller and they also breed like rabbits. The, so the wet spot has those, no one else does in the country right now. Palmatacrumus, they're a wonderful genus. Not that aggressive. Again, I keep these with my with my Paranaca curvus and barbs and everything. They're nice, fairly peaceful, plant eating, you know, I mean, easy, you know, mid-size West African cichlid. And they're lovely. They're just lovely. And they got red coloration here. Um, they're kind of cute, you know, so I've, I've always wanted them. I first got them from like Ted Judy. But yeah, I paid about 25 bucks a pop for those, which I thought was fine. So if you see if you see Pomachakrumas so and you want a mid-range cichlid that's going to act like a large, mm, I don't know, like a port cichlid or you know, or an Akara or you know, a, a, you'd like like the same size as, as your regular like Akaras or you know, mid-size, you know, that's fine. They're great. And again, they're not going to rip up your plants like like Severums will. All right, great fish. Okay, this is. You, I see these a lot too. These can be little, these can be aggressive at times, but they're uh, very easy to keep. Um, they can be. This is a really nice picture. I've never seen them get this pretty because I've never the lighting. Um, again, easy to keep little dwarf. You know, I'm not. They're they're not my favorite, but they're really easy to they're easy to keep and in the right lighting they can be really really nice. African butterfly cichlid. That's what they are. Usually they're only maybe about ten bucks a pop most times. But these, but these you see fairly often. Again, they're not gonna look very good in, in your pet store tank. So you wanna get them and, in plants. Uh, Hemochromis, lots of Hemochromis out there. Uh, the only one I've really kept is Stilifer. Um, these are stunning. They're actually fairly, they're not killers like some of the other Hemochromis can be. These guys are about mid-size. The female gets more arms that they've been breeding. They produce a lot of babies. The stillifer is probably the least aggressive of all of them. You can have them with mid-sized fish just fine, and they're like, and they're not going to rip, them, they're not going to rip up your your plants very much. Uh, if you can see, but it's, that's my favorite species. They have striping through there, as you can see. There are some lateral stripes through there as well. Hemochrome is stillifer. They're they're just a really um, pretty fish, and again, they're not like psycho, like they're, they're not like psychotic like some other jewels can be. Um, but you can keep these with with other fish, and they'll still be alive. Uh, again, these are not quite 
East West African, but they show up in West African books as the mouth brooders. Do you see these a lot on the wet spot list? These are pretty. You basically she's carrying babies. She's not. The, you keep them in harems. You keep them in like you keep them in a twenty long. Keep by three females. Give each a cave, and he'll attend all of them. And you have lots of babies to bring back. And they like plants, and they're really easy, and, and they're and they're kind of cute. So the mouth brooders, the the other ones are, are Nicolcia, which get even more iridescent blue. These guys, if you like the look of a Haplochromus, but in a little plant loving fish. This is it, because they're in that they're in that group actually. They're in the haplochromus. If you probably if you know haplochromus, you can see them right away that they're the hapl they're in that family. Great fish. It known as the Egyptian mouth brooder, which used to be you used to see them all the time. But I see back in the 80s, you used to see them on all the books, and I hardly ever see them. But I've never been able to pronounce that genus very well. Cheetocrane leapers. Thank you very much. That's why you're here. That's that's why you came out tonight. Um, so wonderful, wonderful species. Again, if you've ever wondered why the males have a bright red spot on their caught on that tail, you ever wondered? And so the female, when she pecks the eggs, will think that's an egg, and then he fertilizes her mouth while she's doing it. It's kind of gross, but that's what that's how they do it. All right, now uh, this is my new favorite genus, Cranacochromus. They're the new favorite because I couldn't get them before. They're not an easy genus to get, but now with importations, Wet Spot has them, and and the uh, and and Jeff Michaels does it up at uh, Aquatic Clarity. Lots of pretty browns. If you like brown pattern fish, this is your fish. Uh, this is called Fasciatus. Uh, they are that's that's kind of what they look like. Mine are getting a little bit bigger, but I have mine in the twenty. These like cool water, so if you don't want to have a heater in the tank, you can keep these. They're fine. Uh, the they are they can be semi aggressive, but I have mine with like 18 and the 20 long with like 18 white or 17 white clouds and they're fine. They don't hurt them at all. And there's some reticulated uh, Siamese algae ears. Cool fish. I've not, I've yet to breed mine, but they like it really soft. So what I have been doing is I got Placo caves, and whenever they're kind of I, I was worried about aggression, so I put more Placo caves in there, and I put long fiber sphagnum moss in the Placo caves to add more acidity to that, which is another way, another way to bump up your acidity is to get some long fiber sphagnum moss and don't get the stuff at Home Depot. They usually the moss or stuff is crap. You want to get good New Zealand sphagnum moss because I'm an orchid grower and that's what I pot with. So Lowe's Grower Ron, Lowe's has good New Zealand long fiber sphagnum moss that's better. Don't the Home Depot said I just at least in Charlotte then it's junk. But the long fiber sphagnum moss is really the best. So you put that in their caves or their coconut places and they'll breed in the cave and that'll help them get excited. All right, Kill, that works, a friend of mine who raises killifish does, does that too. So the uh, Paranacochromus, they're just a really neat fish. They, they look like a cross between an Anacochromus, which they were, because they were part of that at the time. And you know, they sort of have that with, with, a, with an Anacochromus. So a lot of rumuses, a lot of rumuses, uh, because those are all in the chromatolophy group. All right, we're gonna another now. The most recent one I got, I just got these about uh, <coughs> a month ago. My local fish store orders from Home with Aquatics, and uh, Toy and had a pair of these. And my guy, and my guy said, uh, I have to charge 150 for those. And I said, like, What? He's like, Of course I was gonna buy them because I mean I love that many. So, but he said. But I really want to see them, so I'll like, oh, sell you for $100. I'm like, done. So we got it for $100 a pair. And Jeff Michaels only got males, but I got a female. So, uh, so lucked out. That's the female. She almost always has that extended. I first thought it was a male. I'm like, no. And that's the male. I love the bronze gills with these. Again, uh, they do have reddish fins there a little bit, but that's as bright as they get. But they're really getting a breeding coloration. You're getting more deep reds showing up. But again, I love their bronze gill flukes and everything. And yeah, they're, 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 they can be aggressive with the cichlids, but they don't mess with anyone else. And they, they do fine with the palmatacrumus living up top, and these guys are on bottom, then they're fine. But again, really neat, really neat genus. Really neat. Now the other ones out there is is, is, palma, is uh, pal, uh, Paranacacrumus um, longipumus, which is really big. They get about five inches, and they're they're kind of aggressive. They're definitely with predators, and they I've seen them. I had a male, and I used to tackle. All right, what's going on? Okay, we're gonna get we're gonna speed up, guys. Oh Buffaloes. 
Buffalo cichlids, sorry if I get too up. The buffalo you see is a lot. I haven't kept many of these, but they're really cool. <coughs> if these, Richard, if you've seen these, you're, you're, you have them. Yeah, you've had these. These are great. Uh, like rapids, okay, so they're with more, more, more uh, alkaline water. Uh, okay, well, lots of chromis. Um, you, this is what you were talking about. These are Rubulia viatis. I love these. These are about a mid range cichlid. Uh, again, mine get hold in the head really quick. My male got hold in the head. But I still, but I got babies before he died. So, well, Rubulia viatis is my favorite. They're nice and really red. And the females got that beautiful pink and yellow and purple around them. They're stunning. Like plants, but they're, but they're mid sized, about, about 45 inches. The other one, this is Hamelis. This is the pair I had. My, my male, my, the female killed the male, so I never brought them. But you can get them, but give them a bigger tank. I had a 40 breeder, I'd probably give them something larger. Uh, again, pretty fish, but the females of this species can be aggressive. Is this what you were talking about? Uh, this is what you were looking at? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the other one is Cygnatus. I've never kept these. I've read that they could, that the females can be psychotic and kill males. That I read a whole article in TFH about this guy had the problem with them. I've never kept them, but they're pretty. I I have found that the Humilis and the and the Rubulaviatus, which I had babies of, now were more my favorite. I think Rubulaviatus is my favorite of the genus. But they're all three. They used to be called for the Cronus. They were named after Wallace, who was the other guy that came right with this theory of evolution behind Darwin. So Anton Lamboge named him to, to give a credit to Wallace. All right, Lamprologus, this is our, we're actually in the last bit of genus. All right, so Lamprologus, these guys are common. I breed these like crazy. Again, it's one of those how many, you know, finding homes from is not always easy, but they're cute and they're fun and they can tolerate a wide range of water. And if we get to do your water changes for a month and a half, they're not gonna be upset. They're probably gonna breed more. All right, they breed, breed like comics. I keep three three pairs of the 20 long. They cheat each other around, but they don't kill each other, and they, they don't mind a few plants. Uh, I had 15 leopard daniels in there. I only have four now, so I guess I guess they get I guess they're a little bit aggressive toward, toward the leopard daniels. <laughs> so they don't need a lot of the other fish. They will they will come and figure it all on their own though. That helps them in the beginning, but get some good side dinners, um, and they'll be fine. Not super colorful, as you know, as Lucana says. I've heard that he's, they call them bright browns. But yeah, they're they're just a cute fish. Uh, I I just love them. I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do with all my fry at home, but uh, you know, it, they're they're just fun to watch. And this is Congoensis, the other one you see. This is uh, this pair I had. I had these in a 12 gallon bio cube, and they were breeding. You know, so really easy. The other genus I've not brought into is Congochromus, which are out there. They're like a crop. They used to be Nanochromus. They're very brightly colored. They like really, really soft water. So concrimus are easy and you should look into those as well. All right, here's last but here, oh, here are sources. These are aquatic clarity, the wet spot, tangled up in single, Rehoboth. Get your local fish store to order from them directly because they got really good South America or if someone can order directly, he'll so do a club order from them. Uh, he's got terrific stuff. He's the main importer for Westies in the country because Jeff Michaels and wet spot get most of their stuff from him. Um, he's great to come like, hey, did you get any pelvic crumus teniatus? Sometimes they get, uh, he, he gets the odd stuff in the boxes and he'll, then he'll sell it to you, okay? Uh, Tristan's Tropical Fish, I've never ordered from, but I, I like his stuff and I see him on Facebook and he knows Jeff Michaels for a while and, and Ted Judy, so I'm like, he's got some cool fish and he's got wild betas, so yeah, I'm all about that. Uh, other than, of course, other hobbies. Well, it's getting about 10.15, and I know, um, and I just want to thank you for remember any, any questions? Any questions? It's 9.15. He oh, just came from the East Coast. <laughs> it says 10.19 on this computer. No. <laughs> it's 8.45. Whose computer is that? See, it looks so dark. I'm like, I'm like an East Coast time. You're good. I a lot of those fish myself. Yeah, so. It's been a while since I've been here. There, it's, it's a good, it's a good virus guy, so thank you. Steve, good job bringing them in. Thank you. It's I'll take all the credit. Thank you very much. I think you have a picture, Steve, of, you didn't show any Nanochromus minor. Have you ever tried them? No, I haven't, haven't. Steve Thornton, I got some from him. Before. Steve Thornton, I've met him a couple times. I don't have them right now. Yeah, I'm not going to. 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 Yeah, I'm not going to